Right. We are. We are in business. Yes. Hi, Stefan. Uh, we are on page. Well, let's pick it up. Uh, pick it up at the, the top of Kufnun Chet, uh, in the middle of chapter eleven, Midrash two. So we got to um, we got to last time this idea that we, you you were both you both you were here last last time yeah. right that the, 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 it had been bright all the way through Shabbat and now with Motzei Shabbat it was all of a sudden starting to get dark um, and this was the first time right through Erev Shabbat as well right right right, 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 right through night. Friday night um, yeah. and that now for the That's first right. time yeah 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 That's right. okay, yeah yeah and now for the first time on Saturday night. It was starting to get dark on Adam and, and Eve. So um, we're slightly picking up in the middle of a sentence, but it's just complicated to kind of plot it anywhere else. So let's just pick it up the first two words at the top of Kufnun Chet. Shishkai Chama. Lester, do you want to read? When we say Shabbat, it's the Yom HaKosha. On Saturday night, Sorry, Shishakach Chama B'Motzei Shabbat. Oh, oh, you want me to? Okay. Yeah. As the sun set on on Saturday night, Shabbat night, the, the darkness began. Hin hin la choshech mishmash 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 End of sentence. Right. So shamash means, particularly in the terms of of light, the the shamash on the. Did we talk about this last time? So mishamesh means means mean use or you know uh, 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 available or here probably tra- best translated as kind of uh, became prevalent. Um, so 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 the the word shamash, which I always misunderstood, right? I always thought that the point of the shamash was to use the shamash to light the other candles. That's not actually what the shamash is. The shamash is permissible light from that you area do something else with so that you don't have to kind of walk around going, I'm not using the light from the Hanukkah. Um, so so, must, so must, if you, in that case, must the uh, shamash on Hanukkah be attached to the uh, menorah? Could it be no. just, a, just a candle? You can have a light bulb. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the yeah. shamash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, and, and, and you don't need, hi, Joe, you don't need the shamash to actually light the other candles. Yeah. Just a I did talk about this last time, yeah, yeah. right? Because one of the things that happens is if you do use one of these cheap little candles to light all eight candles, by the time you finish doing this, your shamash is now down here and it doesn't last the requisite 45 minutes, God forbid. What we're going to be studying in Talmud tomorrow is whether you're allowed to use the shamash to light the other candles. Mm. Because that's... That's, that's the reverse. A, there's a machlokas there as well. Good, good, good. Um, Monica, sorry, just bear with me just one second. Monica, hi. Um, we are most of the way through eleven two. Um, we've we're, we've um, if you if you're following in this in the book that we've got, um, it's shishakach chama b'motzei shabbat in chila choshech mishamesh. So uh, and, and and now we have what Adam began to feel the very top line of kufnun chet. Um, what Adam felt about this. Okay. Adam and. Ma, first man was frightened. Good. Frightened himself. Since it's, uh, yeah. Nature, and Yirar is kind of interesting, right? It's just, mm. it's not Pachad, it's not uh, Hared, it's, it's kind of it awed. Trembled. Yeah, just feel right, tremble. There, there's some sense that he's up against it now. Shanae mm. Amar, and he's quoting a verse from Tehillim, Omar Ach Koshech Yishufein, Velayla, or Ba'adein. Yeah, now this is this has been badly. If, if I was in charge of, of, of producing, uh, Brian, there's a little handout here. If I was in charge of, of, of editing this, I would say Vomer ach choshech yushufeni. Pause. End of end of quote. Uh, it, it's, it's entirely wrong that the rest of that quote has been brought in, as we will see later. And he said, Oi, right? Ach, but or wow, or problematic or oh, you know, emphatic. Choshech shofet. I mean, it's also, it's also a word that's used for sort of drowning, right? Um, uh, you know, the, the, the darkness is enveloping me. So what Adam thinks, and why might he think this, is that he's going to be kind of drowned by darkness, and fully destroyed, murdered, dead by darkness. Why might Adam think such a thing? 
He's never seen darkness before. Right, but why might he think that he's due to die? He's been told. He's been... Mort you much, right? Right, right, right. God said, you know, we can take the fruit. Mort you much, you're going to die. So the first thing that he notices... This is it. Is that it gets it dark. Up. It's like one of those people who thinks that they've been poisoned. And then they, sort of, they, they stop feeling like, you know... <laughs> so he sort of... Right, that's the thing that scared him. Good, good, good. Otso uh, shikatu. This is God's um, words to the snake. Good, good, good. Right. So, so the thing about it was written, you will, uh, sorry, he will tread on your head, but you will shofef, right? Shuf. Uh, so it's that root, shofeni, right? It's the, and... It's the same. Can you see? It's the same word that we just had. That you will you will bite his ankle. Um, it has ba lehistavegli has come to. Lehistaveg, literally means to uh, uh, zug ben zug, right? But lehit le, zug is a, is a pair. But lehistaveg means to fight. So Otto, the one about whom it was written, he'll tread in your head, but you'll bite his ankle. Has come to fight me. So it's gone dark. What does Adam think is about to happen to him? Snake's going to take him. Well, snake's going to bite him yeah. and kill him, right? I, mean, I, I think it's this is brilliant, brilliant, brilliant midrash, it, and and just look at that play with with shof and shof pulling together this verse from uh, Psalm 139 right back to this thing, which in your mind is bite, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it's not engulf or envelop or drown, even if that's what it grammatically means. It's a really, really good. Um, piece of midrash that the snake's going to come and bite me in the dark. Masa hakadosh baruch What did God do then? Zimem lo shnei ra'afim v'hi kishan zelaze. Yeah, I mean, led him towards, right? So we would usually translate a zimun as an invitation, right? As in the Chavarayn Barek, right? But, but, but here, I just think you just need to go idiomatic on it. It must mean, um, you know, brought him or, or, or joined him. Two stones. The pebbles. Mm -hmm. And he bumped against each other. other. Hit them to each other. Yeah, and what happens when you... Oh, make light, you mean. Spark. Mm. Spark. We had some hand or... Right. So he hits these two stones together, um, as in, uh, you know, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, right? What should you do? Keep banging the rocks together, right? You know? So he starts striking these things together, and there and there are these there are these sparks. Fantastic! And what happens in the spark? How does Adam feel? Now that's the second half of the verse. Now we're ready for the second half of the verse, right? So he bangs these rocks together, or comes out of them. So let's let's suppose that he uses the the sparks to light a thing, and he produces flame. I mean, so in many ways, this is the um, the, the, the myth of the invention of fire, the Prometheus myth, right? This is the Jewish, this is the rabbinic version of the Prometheus myth. Yeah. The, 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 when the light falls on Adam, on Adam's first, on second night alive, right? Having taken the fruit, not having been rendered into darkness on Shabbat, Lechovod Shabbos, mm -hmm. um, all of a sudden darkness comes, Adam thinks he's going to be bitten by a snake, and, and what are snakes afraid of? Those of us who remember our Indiana Jones will know this perfectly. Fire. 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 fire, good, specifically. Um, the, 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 now, you know, he, Adam, uh, he is, uh, Adam is zimen, his, 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 uh, or his man, he's invited to make fire. He makes fire and he creates fire. And what does he do? He barach What does he say? Oh, sorry, we, yeah, barach <laughs> right? But like, let's just, sorry, let's just slow down just for a second and catch now the second part of this verse from Psalm 139. Hi, Gizifir. Welcome, welcome. Uh, so the second half of this verse, right? Va'omer, ach choshech yishufeini, Right, so darkness will come, and let, now let's do the midrashic explanation of this. Darkness will come and bite, me. and bite me, right? Or in the darkness, the snake will come and bite me. But, and Brian, you know, you're my favourite Vava's butt person. <laughs> but in the lila, or shall be my Eden. 
Eden literally means. Gane dan. Pleasure. Right? Or the, in the light shall be in. Or, or, or midrashically. But in the light there will be or in my garden of Eden. <laughs> it's a really terrific verse. Read, right? So they're now reading this verse to be a verse that proves that there was or but Aden. Shelley or but Adeni, right? But in, in, in Adam's Aden. It's a very, very smart piece of Midrash. Indeed. I like it a lot. And um, we're just going to spend a bit of time on this Bore More Ha Eish, which of course, you know, we would recognize because when do you say the Bracha Bore More Ha Eish? After Shabbos. After Shabbos. Mm-hmm. So actually, one of the things that we're doing when we say Bore More Ha Eish, Ahavdala after Shabbos, is we are kind of revisiting that sense of the emergence from the era, from the fear of the darkness of that first Shabbat leaving. Um, and it's a really, I think it's a really smart, I think it's a really, really smart midrash. So any of these midrashim, we, are, we keep on referring to, to Adam, and it's always referred to Adam. Does Eve get poor old Eve? Yeah, yeah, we're, 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 give us, give us, give us, give us some time. I mean, in some okay. ways, we've leapt slightly, we've leapt slightly forwards, right? Because what we're now dealing with is the, uh, the, the moment of the end of the first Shabbat. Uh, because we're here, because we've just gone through Bayechulu, right? Uh, but we haven't had the story of Adam. We haven't had the story of the creation of Eve yet, because that's only in the in Genesis chapter two. Um, in Genesis chapter one, God creates a single Adam, du uh, part Do you remember that we had that two Zacharu Nekiva with both genders, kind of a part of that, that that first Adam. The first Adam is not masculine. The first Adam is is Zacharu Nekiva, right? Uh, no, not not androgynous. Um, uh, uh, both, right, both. Right, sorry, I'm, I'm not quite. I think androgynous is no, no, no specific sexuality. The first Adam is is both. Um, uh, yeah. So I, ju- I just think a really smart sorry, piece of it. Hi, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are. Um, right. So let's just, just would you just come back? Just three, just three lines, um, three words. Uh, Lester Maberech. So he, he added the first man, when he saw the spark and the light and the fire, he, he made the blessing of Bore Ma'oreheish. Good. At Yeke Shmuel, the Omar Shmuel, so we have a drusha from Shmuel. Mepne ma'am l'vorchen al ha'or v'motzei Shabbat. The Omar Shmuel, yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Drusha, why do we bless al light v'motzei Shabbat? Um, so because this was the first instance of the creation of fire, is that it? Good, 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 right? So, the, 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 yeah, so <coughs> Shmuel says, why do we bless Bre Marei Ha'esh? Because we are commemorating the creation of fire. Rav Huna b'shem Rav, Rabbi Abahu b'shem Rabbi Yochanan Amar, af these people all said, we know that we also, at the end of Yom Kippur, we do, um, uh, we make Havdalah, and we make mm-hmm. especially boring Meore uh, Ha'esh, Mipnei Sheshavat Ha'or Kol Oto Ha'yom. That on Yom Kippur, the light, Rested. I, I'm not quite sure. What yeah, the light had the, the whole the whole mm, day, day off. off. All right. So I mean, uh, there, there are a couple of things that are sort of swinging swimming around here. One is usually the havdalah that you do at the end of a festival, you don't make a blessing over the candle, right? So because you're using a lighted candle. No, I, no, 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 no. Because the according to Shmuel, because the blessing bore more haesh is a Saturday night blessing. It's mm. not an end of not working day. It's mm. not, a, not an end of a yontav. It only works when you are, when you are kind of calling the anniversary, not the anniversary, the, the weekiversary of, the, um, of the, the creation of light. But um, on Yom Kippur, there is another reason why we say Bore Morei Ha'esh, because the light is Shabbat um, for, for, for the whole day. Light has the day off. Yes. 
Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I don't know the midrash on this. I do remember looking something up. I want to just take a flying guess that the world is illuminated on Yom Kippur by the power of Jewish prayer rather than. It says here, i.e., no fire was lit on that day. But I don't know where they get that from. Yeah, well, that's not. I mean, that doesn't necessarily. That there is a very interesting argument between Hillel and Shammai as to the order of the blessing on Havdalah. Um, when Shammai thinks that you say the blessing on the flame first, and Hillel says the blessing on the flame last, of course we're Kahila, we go last. But the reason why Shammai says that you say first is because you lit a big candle to keep the world, to keep your life bright at the beginning of Shabbat, and it's lasted from sundown all the way through to stars out. It's lasted 25 hours. Say the bracha on it quick before it goes out. Hillel, and of course Hillel is poor, right? Hillel is so poor he can't afford to study. Hillel has not wasted a candle uh, burning that way. So there's, 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 there's darkness. So, so, so Hillel's candle, if he lit a candle from sundown into, let's say, 10, 11 o'clock at night, um, that's then gone out. So the, you need a new candle, so therefore it goes, it goes later. So there's a, whole, um, there's a whole thing about light and, uh, and, and, and Havdalah candles. Yeah, I think Paul, Paul Lises, but it's missing... Anytime I read Jews like the Hebrew, it's rather represented with a uh, or, or, but in the our ancient Hebrew language is or like my name Chawen Ho, Ho Din, which is or which is umbrella or anything that covers us like light, the presence of God. I remember before I turned to come here, I was I said, oh my God, I've left my umbrella. Because back home, or we were told ancient history, I said, Akataria covers you. Cover your umbrella. Yeah. Always good. Yeah. And not uh, always, always wear wise. raincoat during. Always a wise thing raining. to take your umbrella with yes. you. All right, let's, let's, so let's, I let's, was let's, just talk, let's, thinking let's. about all that. So when I entered, I said, my God, I've missed few, but missed that's why, yes. <laughs> okay. I was just talking about the all, thinking about the all. All right, so, um, this is again Vayvarech Elohim et Yom Hashvi'i. So we've got that God blessed the seventh day. So we've just had a whole kind of discussion on this. We're now going to go again. There is another blessing of the Sabbath day, and we're going to suggest that God blessed the Sabbath day for for for, for what reason, right? Why did God bless Shabbat? Um, uh, Milton, do you want to do some reading in relation to the to the Garden of Eden? <coughs> Why did God bless a day? I mean, what does it? What, what, what does that actually mean? So, well, according to the, uh, does it mean the, 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 the that's the day he uh, completed his uh, creation. He would he would bless it, wouldn't he? It's, 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 it's the, 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 cum the culmination of my creation. What does it mean and to bless? I mean, you know, when I, when I, I mean, I, you know, you when, yeah. when I, when I, when I bake a cake, I don't bless the cake. I bless before I eat the cake, but I'm not God. Why did God, I mean, you know, what's God trying to do by blessing? That's the question. It, we might not finish the answer to it today. But let's, uh, let's, let's leap in. Uh, Nelson. Oh, but yeah. Um, I'm just Yitzia means exit, right? It means going out. Yep, you know you could see it, you know the fire exit signs. And, but what this means, and and you just have to you'll just have to take it from me, and, and, and it will it will be the gift that keeps giving. Um, it means uh, you when you pay out money on Shabbat. If you spend money to do Shabbat, God blesses you with getting your money back. Right. So this is about um, uh, it. Uh, Shall I, shall I spoil the end of this for you? Right, the end of this for you is a version of the midrash that I did, I think, as a sermon a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. about the guy with the fish. Right, do you remember? Mm -hmm. um, that uh, um, uh, in, the, in the Talmud, it's a st it's the story of Yosef Machabed Shabbos, and there's a rich man, and he sells all the money that he has, and he buys a jewel, and he puts the jewel inside his hat, but the wind blows the hat off, and the hat falls into the water, and the fish eats the jewel. And nobody wants to buy the fish because it's been brought out of the water too late in the day. It's too close to Friday afternoon. The market's all shut. But they go and they sell it to Yosef and Mechobet Shabbos, Joseph who on the Shabbat, because he'll always buy anything for the sake of Shabbos. 
they sell him this dodgy fish, he cuts it open and the jewel's inside, right? So so that the, the, if you if you go big on Shabbat, Shabbat goes big back to you. Yes, the, the question was not directed to me, it was directed to Brian. But can I just say that? In our language, ancient Hebrew language, Saturday we call it all. We call Saturday all. And those of us who were born on Shabbat, because I remember Angela was talking to me, and he asked me something. He said her birthday. And I said, oh, Angela, yes, I'm, I was born on Shabbat. I was born on all. Yes, that's uh, really lovely. Session. You know what? We so can't, we can't, we, let me, I'm just going to say that that's why God's blessing to be a cover. To be blessed as a cover. Yeah. That's beautiful. Okay, let's bring, let's bring back. Hi, you all right? You mean, yeah, yeah, sorry, I've been around the world. That's all right. Uh, the Hamilton City line does go straight oh, street now. Yeah, I know. That's too much. Yeah, well, thank you for, for, for fighting your way through. Uh, um, yeah, listen, we should just dedicate our learning today to those who are mourning and, and in terrible loss and, uh, and pain after that awful, awful disaster on Saturday. Uh, on Saturday, Thursday, right? Thursday. Um, all right, so Berach ob Yitzia. So the, the God blesses you, blesses the Shabbat, particularly if you have spent out money, you're going to get it back. Where does that come from the word Yitzia? It just uh, doesn't come. It, 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 it kind of doesn't. Right, I mean, what am I, what am I doing? What am I doing? Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's going out of your pocket. So I'm just looking down. Can you see the, the commentary? Ah, right, Shemotzi Adam Mamon Lechovad HaShabbat. HaKadosh Baruch Hu Mashlim Zo Mashlim Lo Chesrono. Right, that if he pays out money for the sake of honoring the Sabbath, the Holy Blessed One, Mishalem, shalems him, fills him back up for, for what he has lost. Okay. I'll have that, Got it. Nothing with you. That's all right. That'll be good. A little bit of humility in there. Uh, <laughs> don't have enough. Already. No, we're not sure of humility. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, Rabbi Levi B'Shem, Rabbi Yosef, Rabbi Hanina. Amar kol yom sheyesh bo chesron. Ketiv bo baracha ve'eino chesed. Chaser. Chaser Klum. All right. Uh, pause. So Rabbi Levi, B'Shem Rabbi Yosef, Rabbi Chanina, they said, Kol Yom. Uh, every day. She yesh bo chasem, something chasem. Every day, every day there is something missing. Ketiv bo bracha. There is written a blessing. Right, where it says Baruch Avay Barech, right? God, God blesses. We could sit there and go through all the days when God actually says on a day Barech, right? So that any day when there is a Brach, when the, when there is something missing, on that day there's a Bracha, but ain't no chaser klum. And nothing's missing. And nothing, and nothing's missing. And the minute that God says Bracha, ain't no chaser klum. Nothing, nothing is 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 gone at all. So, for example, which day are we going to have a look at? Good. 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 All right. So on the fifth day, bara in the passive. So were bara was created. Good. Ofot and dugim. Ofot. Uh, uh, birds. Yeah, and dug. Uh, fish. And bnei adam. And man. And they. So no, no. Sorry. And what, what, what does what does bnei adam do? Bnei adam. Sorry. Bnei adam. Shochatim. Shochet. Killed. Right, shochets the off, the bird. Bless you. The ochlin, the ochlin, and eats it. Right, and then he tzadim the dagim the ochlin. Fish. Yes, good. Hunts the fish. Right, it literally hunts, but you know, catches the fish and eats them. Good, good, good. And what does it say about the fifth day? Ketiv ba bracha. Uh, and it was written there, blessing. Yep. And 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 do so. So nothing was missing. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think the way to understand this, I'm, I have to say, uh, what I think it's saying is that you might have thought that if you were to go around, right, uh, everything was made, 
and you went and you took some fish out of the sea and you took some birds, uh, there would be no more birds left in the world. Or fewer anyway. Or fewer yes. anyway. You know, fortunately, it says about such a day that there is a bracha on such a day and the bracha is the gift that keeps on giving, which means since God has put a bracha into play on Yom HaMishi, there are no fewer fish in the sea, despite the fact we have fished them. Now, I understand that the Marine Stewart... work. I understand that the Marine Stewart... fishing I think, hard in the North Sea. I think, I think the Marine Stewart Council would have words to say about that. Um, Don't tell me to go shake us. Right, right. But that's the... I think that's the... That's, the, that's the, as it were, the Peshat of the Midrash. Bishishi nivra adam v'hema uvne adam shokhatim v'hema v'ochlim v'ne adam meitim v'ketiv bo bracha v'eino chesed klum chaser, chaser klum good um, on the sixth day yep. nivra adam nivra? yep, uh, the, the passive Three. of bara uh, created were created was created were created um, Adam or Behema man Adam Behema and Behema an animal, animal. Yeah. so I think and you're, you say yeah Uvne Adam and man killed the animals and ate them good um, Uvne Adam ate him what happens to humanity what happens to all of us at one point we die yeah, yeah. so you um, might think that there would be less of us around because, uh, you know, there are less cows and less human beings around. However... And because there is written a blessing, there is nothing, uh, nothing missing. Okay, so anything that is de- anything that is stepped back on Hamishi or Shishi, right, less birds and, and fish, less... Uh, animals and humanity because there is a bracha it's mashlim right it's made back up anybody who spends money on Shabbat it's mashlim why would mankind be diminished because he's slaughtered a few animals well Well, I think that's just the mortal that is all he has shuffled off he has he has shuffled off his mortal coil um Oh, you put a you put a you put a dagesh in your f- f- first <laughs> year. <laughs> Back where I come from, no dagesh in that p- 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 Um uh, Bishvi, yeah, lots of still with you. Bishvi ma'i itzlecha lemeimar. So, so what about the seventh? What are you going to say about the seventh? That's an Aramaic phrase. Ma'i lach lemeimar. What are you going to say? Uh, Rabbi Levi Bishem Rabbi Chama uh, Barachanina Amar Yipne Ayitia um, was created the exit. Yeah, no, no. What, what, what are you yeah. going to say about the seventh? What right. is the mushlim of the reduction that happens on the. You know, so you get a reduction, you then get the bracha and it's mushlim. Okay. What's the reduction on the seventh day? The amount of money you spend on Shabbos. But there's a bracha, so Eina Chaser Klum. It all gets made up. <clears throat> Uh, uh, so he's given away the punchline at the first two words of the midrash. Yeah. So yeah. Exactly. Well, no, no. Well, so uh, I mean, again, I mean, you know, if you were to do the um, the sort of source criticism of this, what you would suggest is that uh, this midrash originally started it was not originally here, mm. right? It's been it's been it's been hauled in, and that that, that last little line mm. is the show, is a demonstration where where it came from originally. Where it where is mm. it? Uh, it's it's in Beitzer, right? Beitzer sixteen uh, a. And Pesik to Rabati, Pesik to Rabati is Tamaitic midrash, so so it's it's older, it's a lot older than most of this mm-hmm. stuff. Um, we're still going to play with this idea, however. Uh, good, 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 good. Lester, do you want to do a bit? Shall I do a bit? We've got quite. One well, yeah, Lester, back back with you. I'll I'll, I'll pick it up. Okay. Rabbi Lazar B'shem Rabbi Yosef Omar. There'll be basically the, the effort you put into Shabbat, will be, you'll be, it'll get back. It's more, 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 more than, money. than money. The money you spend on it. Don't worry mm. about putting on a decent spread for Shabbos. I mean, mm. we'll, we'll see. You're laying out money, but you'll get it back. You'll get it back. God will, God will, God will. Tell the case for that. Ain't no chaser. 
And it works halfway for me. Okay, Rabbi Lazar in the name of Rabbi Yossi said, Mitnei is Tanisim Berachol. Okay, so why did you want... What is is Tanisim? It's one of these really interesting halakhic words. So I've given you the Jastro... Uh, is it Jastro bonus? No, no chance for Jastro bonus. Um, a, a feeble health, delicate and fastidious in diet. Um, and I've just given you a little grab from uh, one of these kind of uh, bloggy things. His word I've come across a few times this week, istanis, sometimes istanis, istanis. It means a person who is overly sensitive, squeamish and finicky. Um, my children are sometimes like this. Eat your broccoli. You know, it's that, it's that kind of thing, right? It's usually referred to a person who's particularly sensible about bathing or eating, right? They need well-cooked food and they need to wash themselves. So <clears> days when you're not supposed to wash themselves, the istanis sometimes gets a special uh, um, permission to wash themselves. And um, when there are issues around not uh, uh, not uh, cooking food through, maybe because it's Shabbat or this, that or the other, the istanis, it's allowed, you know, we go nice on these kinds of people because it's kind of sort of, uh, they've got special needs, you know, they need the food kind of properly, you know, made nice and uh, and, and cooked for them. Um, right, bathing, that's, that's the, right, the big issue on bathing is morning. So if you if you are supposed to be morning, you're not supposed to bathe. But if you say istanis, honey, like uh, it's, I'm just going to be, I'm going to feel so uncomfortable. Uh, I need to bathe. It's an istanis is allowed to bathe. There's actually there's a there's a there's a case of a rabbi who um, is accused of never having married, and he says istanis, honey. Uh, okay. You know, just couldn't 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 cope with that. Uh, you know, with that, and is let off. He never washed. <laughs> no, no, they, they, no, no, they I'm wash really a lot. Not. They wash a lot. It's, 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 it's they like it's, 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 it's not that. It's the other thing. Yeah, they, they don't like their, they don't like their, they don't eat their broccoli and they wash a lot, right? <laughs> um, but, but it, you know, like just the whole thing of marriage, it, oh, it's the sunny. Like it's just, it's not gonna. Okay, fine. You know, you're not gonna, you're not gonna fulfill the obligation of pruravu, but you know, you're an istanis. So it's kind of, it's quite interesting. One, it's one of those things in the Talmud that gets pointed to by people who are looking to. Uh, suggest more of an awareness of homosexuality than you might see on the sort of straightforward uh, read through of the Talmud. They're suggesting maybe this is somebody just saying, like, I'm just not attracted to women. It's just like it's just not going to be, it's just not going to be good all round. Like, you know, just just go for somebody else. I remember having this conversation with Steve Greenberg. Uh, Steve Greenberg is um, it was the first out gay rabbi, quite well known, that was very involved in things like Trembling Before God. It's going back 15, 20 years. Um, but he was saying, you know, wherever he went, people would try and set him up on these shidduchim. <laughs> and he couldn't come out. Uh, and he just had to sort of, he just, had to sort of, he just had to go, well, you know, it's a bit sort of like, you know, is this really? You know, and then sort of people eventually would give up. He said, but what about my friend, you know, this one or my friend, that one? He's, he's, he's happily married now. Um, yeah, and a little bit of etymology here. Um, right, istanis. You, you don't need to be much of a, a philologist to know that it's uh, not originally a Hebrew word. It comes from the Greek asthenes with a and then stenos the root stenos is used in a number of medical terms most of them calith stenos oh, interesting right there we go turns out you know turns out we know more than we think that we do we, we, oh please uh, I've still got one left good uh, okay, so Rabbi Lazarus said, amin. So, some sort of delicacies of food, matamim. Yeah, it? well, on their, on their taste, right? Because the, the whole point on Shabbos is that they get these beautifully well cooked meals. That you know, it's the the, the, the istanis really needs nice food all the time. On Shabbos, they get it. I mean, the, the sense that you have in the ancient world was that you didn't really get much in the way of fancy food all week um you know but on shabbos three proper meals of her you know it's very nice um rabbeinu oh no yeah metamim full stop rabbeinu asa suuda la antoninos shabbat so some antony well ha and uh the the emperor antoninos uh Right, so 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 mm. so Rabbeinu, so that this is um, you know the 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 great Rebbe uh, uh, goes off to Rome and uh, entertains the emperor for Shabbos, but on Shabbos 
What kind of food do you have to serve? Ah. Cold food. It serves him, uh, it serves him you know, room temperature food. Right? Why does he serve him room temperature food? Can't cook, cook. Can't cook on Shabbos. Right? So he's got the emperor around for Shabbos lunch. What shall I serve the emperor? You know, it's going to have to be cold cuts. <laughs> you know, all right, I know, you know, like a salad. <laughs> they didn't have salad. tea They didn't have chillin' pots. Well, they I mean, they had done. some way. They had, I mean, yes. I mean, they're, they're, they're certainly the idea that you can cook, um, that you could put food in the baker's oven and, yeah. and this, that, and the other does exist. But, you know, here we are in Rome. Maybe maybe he's only nipped over to Rome. You know, arrives on Rome on, uh, you know, <laughs> Close enough to Shabbat, he hasn't got time to kind of sort out where the baker's oven is or all this kind of stuff. But he's got the emperor around and he's serving him... Salad and sandwiches. Salad and sandwiches. That's exactly it. Is, any, is this a, just a... Uh, is it based on any facts, this? It's absolutely yeah. not based on any no. facts whatsoever. Right? I mean, you know... I mean, this is Midrash. But, it's, right, but it is... I mean, it's based on the idea mm. that the rabbis were very important people in the eyes of the Romans. You know, and there are a number of rabbi meets Roman emperor... Mm -hmm. uh, Midrashim, um, the most famous of which is the um, uh, Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai when he kind of goes in to see uh, um, Vespasian and says, Hail Emperor! And he goes, I'm not an emperor, is he? I'm going to kill you because you're calling me an emperor when I'm not an emperor. You know? And the messenger arrives, he goes, The three guys previously in line to the throne are all dead, you're now yeah. emperor. You know, that's <laughs> a Monty Python esque, really. So, oh, well, you can have whatever you want. Okay, I'll have you know, so that. So, um, yeah. Okay. The uh, Arevlo Asalo Sudabako. So, the so, Arevlo, how did he feel about his salad and sandwiches? Arev. He liked him. Liked him. Cold fish. Cold, yeah, cold. We can, we can discuss. We can discuss exactly the menu at another time. Yes. Asalo Sudabako, he did a fan of Tashilin Rochin. So, we also made another meal for the emperor. On the hall. Midweek. And he brought some cooked foods. I guess they were hot. Hot food, right? I mean, it's, you know, he's coming in, coming, <clears> nipping <throat> around. He's got, got the emperor around on Thursday. I know, let's give him some stew. Hot, nice hot stew. Because, you know, you've got the emperor coming around, you give him hot food. Omalo, otan, arvuli yotzehema So the emperor said, I'd like the cold cuts better than the hot stew. Yes, yes. I mean, you know, I, mean, I suppose, I mean, you know, if there is any fact to this whatsoever, there is that idea, you know, it's like you, you kind of bet the Queen fancies salads and sandwiches every now and again, rather than, you know, this sort of froofy kind of, you know, with the frill and the thing, you know, and any time that she ever goes anywhere, everybody wants to pull on the kind of the Huda cuisine, you know, and you suspect, you know, salad cold cuts would be fine. Anyhow, <laughs> this is the story here that the, the, the Empress just said, I like the cold stuff more than I like the hot stuff. Okay, I'm alone. Um, tevel echad hein chaserin. So the stuff I cooked for you on Thursday, there is a tevel, which is chaser. There is a ingredient. So there's something. There's a spice which is missing. And who said this? The, the rabbi. The rabbi. Okay, so presumably the emperor answered, "Omalo v'chi yesh kelarin shel melach chaser klum." So no, sorry, this is sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah, the rabbi. Yes, the rabbi says there is a spice missing from them. So the emperor, presumably, the rabbi's cooking in the emperor's kitchen, right? He's gone in. Oh, I want to know what making what's making the difference. Yeah, yeah. So, the, so, 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 so the rabbi's gone into the into the into the you know the Roman emperor's kitchen and he's whipped him up dinner, and he says, I don't like it so much. And he says, Well, there's a spice missing. So the emperor says, V'chiyesh. Uh, Is it does possible the, that the king the emperor's kitchen could be missing something? Yes. What do you mean? There's a there's a tevel which is missing from this dish that you made me on Thursday. Surely you could find anything you want in my kitchen. Oh my low Shabbat in Syria. Um, this is what's missing. It's not Shabbat now. Right. Eat lach Shabbat. Eat lach Shabbat. You don't have Shabbos. Uh, you know what, my, I, I remember sharing this with my mum, who said, yeah, you, you, you're, it's completely right. 
because challah on Friday night just tastes completely different from challah on every other day of the week, which is probably true. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's it's. I mean, you know, it's very nice. It's very playful, but um, yeah. Uh, the no 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 factual basis whatsoever. Oh, Rabbi Yishmael, Rabbi Yossi, Shia. Sh- yeah, sh- uh, sh- I'm not quite sure why that isn't an aluf. Um, it should be an aluf. I'm sure. In, if we, yeah. The rabbi, um, Omalo bni Babel b'schus ma hein shayim. Bivne Babel b'schus ma hein shayim. Why are the residents of uh, Babylon? Uh, and what merit are they? Mm-hmm. Are they alive? Yep. Or? What have they done well? That the, the, the allow the, the means that they live. Allows them to thrive. Yeah, yeah. perfect. On my low biskut hatora, because of the the chutz, the uh, well, I don't know how you translate zechut. Everyone knows merit. What zechut is merit. 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 Although you, let's just let's just let's just, just sort of acknowledge you just slip slightly into the Ashkenazis there. The sh- the <laughs> <laughs> just just uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Uvene eretz yisrael biskut ma. What are they? What about the residents of, of the land of Israel? What and what merit do they? Are they alive? Omalo biskut maasorot the of maasorot because people only in the land of Israel do you give maasa. Yeah, they tithe, tithe, right? They tithe, and that that gives them that gives mm-hmm. them the schut to live. Interestingly, what does that say about the Torah knowledge of the people of the land of Israel? Let me do that again. It's greater. No, mm-hmm. if yeah, if, if the if the Torah if, if the people in Babel thrive because of the schut of their Torah, yeah. and the people of the land of Israel thrive because of the schut of their giving of Masa, mm-hmm. not so much knowledge of Torah. That's I think I think this is one of these little um, little polemic <laughs> little polemic kind of g- digs. I mean, it's interesting because I mean I'm sure this is drafted in from somewhere else, but I mean you know the, the, the Genesis Rabbah Bereshit Rabbah is usually thought to be. Uh, Palestinian uh, Eretz Yisraeli. Um, this doesn't seem. This that. doesn't. This doesn't seem that way, right? It seems that this is. This is very much that the the, the, the Bnei Bavel are the real lamdanim. They're the real. Uh, they're the real learners. The Anshe Chutzala Eretz Biskut Ma. So the people who presumably live neither in Israel nor in Babylon. Yep. Yes, that's exactly right. Right. I mean, this has to be Babylonian um, midrash, right? I mean, when when Chutz Laaretz means outside of Babel and, and Israel, right? I mean, that's just really. I think that's kind of quite unusual. I'm not sure I've ever seen that usage before. It, it, most of the Mishrashim originate from uh, the Babylonian. No, no, no. no. Lo- 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 yeah. Oh, yes, around. I mean there is quite a lot of Agada in the um, in the Babylonian Talmud, mm. um, but the systematic going through of a text, verse by verse by verse by verse, played bigger in Eretz Israel than it did in Babel. Yeah, but, I mean, but this would have been written by somebody. In I think this has Babel. to be somebody in Babel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this has to be somebody in Babel. Amar lo b'shut shehein mechabdin et hashabatot v'yamim tovim. Ah, so the people who live <coughs> in the diaspora, the, meaning the diaspora from both from Babylon and from Israel, Palestine, they are living on the merit of the, um, they are observant of, of Shabbat and of Yom Tov. Right. Yeah, so you, you, your three options are either learn lots of Torah, in which case you're probably going to be in one of the great academies in Babel, <coughs> or, you know, give Masa, but now the temple's gone and then, you know, we we're in Chol. You know, if if you can't, by dint of your extreme Torah knowledge, deserve life, at least turn up in shul. Turn up in shul, shul. 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 shul, especially on the second day. Turn up in shul, shul. Well, I said, I settled just for shabbos at the moment. Good. Okay. Amar Abchia Bar Abba, Abchia Bar Abba said, "Pam achat zimnani adam echad." Once upon a time, somebody invited me. Belubkiya. I looked up Ludkia. Um, it's miles away. A town, a town in Syria. <laughs> right? I mean, it's absolutely miles away. I mean, it, it, you know, it's way north. Way, 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 way north. Right? So, so, so I think the point is, this is just, this is a long way outside. You know, this is not Hendon. 
You know, this is not, you know, once, you know, the, the, the Golders Green Jew who gets invited to Hendon for Shabbos, this is not that, you know, I've, you know, I, I went to what would be, a, you know, kind of Teaneck or something, right? You know, it's like, I, uh, I think it's Iowa or Nebraska. Well, no, 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 we'll see. Yeah. No, 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 well, we'll see, we'll see what, what happens out, out there. In. <laughs> it's not, I mean, uh, uh, <clears throat> it's, uh, it's kind of. The, the, the guy in Mayor Sharon who gets invited to spend Shabbos in Herzli Petua. That's the, I think that's, the, that's kind of the analogy, right? It's a very wealthy um, place where there are, very, there are Jews, but they're not, they're a lot more wealthy than we are. I think that, that's the point. Well, we'll see. I mean, I read on, so I'm cheating, but... Um, We've done discus before. It's a... Discus, right? It's a, it's a platter. Platter, right? It's a tray. Let's Huge. suppose. Let's like this. The, so they bring forth this great big disc. So un biyudvav motot, I guess, filled with sixteen. No, well, it's it's resting on oh. yud, yud, yudvav. Sixteen, yes. Sorry, yeah. But why we don't usually use yudvav nowadays? No, we don't usually we use, use yudvav. Sorry, I was so I was so I was so clear that it was tetvav that I I tried to correct you, but it doesn't indeed say yudvav. Interesting, and I don't know why you'd bump. Okay, never mind. It's resting on these 16 stains of, you know, like... In other words, it was a very, very big... It is a big platter. And on this huge platter, all sorts of delicacies of things which were created in the six days of creation. Right, so the, 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 what do they cook for Shabbos? This, this massive great big platter of all of creation that are there, right? You know, there's a little waterfall thing going on in one corner and they've built a little uh, little orchard and this, that, the other. Sun right? and the moon. Sun and the moon, you know, made out of cheese. Or, I don't know, let's assume it's meat. It's I don't know, you know. Right, it's a big platter. Wait, you ain't seen, you ain't seen nothing yet. And a baby or a young child was sitting in the middle of the platter. <laughs> Yeah, just keep going. Vahaya machriz vomer, and he would shout out or announce. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. Ladonai ha'aretz umloa tevel v'yoshvei va. Ladonai ha'aretz umloa. Psalm that we sing on Sundays. Just translate it here. Uh, to God is the earth and all that is filled in it. Um, tevel. And, and all of its inhabitants. Right. Yeah, so it's just, you know, so, 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 so Friday night dinner, it's kind of, you know, almost like the kind of the processioning and processing in of the haggis, uh, kind of a rappy, but I don't know, I'm looking at you. Uh, <laughs> Leicester, but well, Kirschenbaum. Well, but, uh, yeah, but, <laughs> right, but, you know, the, 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 sorry, yeah, rubber, right, the rubber band, you know, the, in comes this thing, and there's this little kid sitting there going, ah, ah, you know, and everybody, and there's this sort of huge kind of Chodad Shabbos thing, right? I think that's the point. They've gone big on, on honoring the Shabbat by kind of sort of trying to do a sort of a microcosm of creation. The Omer, this is Korkach. Lama. Kokach Lama? Why do they get a, such an extreme. Shalot Azuach Dato Shabal Habayat Allah. But I guess to make to, to make that the household, the head of household, um, He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to kind of uh, conceal his his worth, mm. right? You know, he's, he doesn't. You know, so he's got a lot of money. If you've got it, flaunt. if you've got it, if you've got it, spend it on Shabbos, right? I think that's. Mm. I think that that would be the the, the, the polite way of saying it. Uh, I said to him, <coughs> this is to the this is the rabbi now talking to this obviously wealthy householder. Mm-hmm. Where did you come? What was the merit which allowed you to have all of this, all of this kavod, all of this uh, mm-hmm. wealth? Omar Li Tabach Hayiti. I used to be a butcher. V'chol behema yafa shehayiti ro'er, and every beautiful animal that I would see, kol yimot ha-shabbat during the week, hayiti mafrishah l'shabbat. I would save her and presumably not slaughter her except to be used on the Shabbat. I think the idea is I didn't sell 
I didn't sell it. Mm. Right? I mean, the, but, the, you know, the butcher goes to the wholesalers, you know, you, you put your order in for three cows for the week, and the nicest cow, he doesn't sell. You know, the nicest cow, he saves for Shabbos. So I think, because I think you have to be a chisron, I think the whole point is that it has to cost you money, this kavoding uh, Shabbos. But this is how this, is how this, this butcher, this simple butcher, um, you know, did honouring the Shabbat, and this has given him the schut to be able to throw this huge party, party for Shabbos every week. Mm. The Amarti, though, and uh, presumably the rabbi, the rabbi now responds, him, Lo al magan zachita. Magan, just try that as uh, chinam rather than magan. Sorry? Just try reading that as chinam. Lo al chinam zachita. Um, Not for nothing did you merit. In other words, you, you, you have indeed deserved, oh. be, mm -hmm. by putting the stuff aside for Shabbos, you have indeed deserved uh, all that you've got. So this is the proof that when you are outside of Bavel and outside of uh, Eretz Israel, how do you get schut? You get schut by, by honouring Shabbos, by, honoring yeah. Shabbos, by putting on a decent meal. Sorry, Brian, were you about to... Shall I, shall I do this? Because I'd quite like to get to this, because it's quite, it's quite good fun. Amar Rabbi Tanchuma, Uvda Havi Baromi, Orvot Tsuma. There is something that happened in Rome on the Erev of the Tsom, on the eve of Yom Kippur. Rabba Hava Tamanchad Chayit, Vaazil Diaz Vinan Le Chad Nun. Sorry, but sorry, Tsoma Rabba, Tsoma Rabba, the big, so on the eve of the big, of the big fast, Yom Kippur. Right? There was there a chayat, a tailor, who went to buy a nun, a dug. He went to buy a fish. A nun is a... A fish. A fish. As it says in the country. Ishtakach hu talya de iprakos keiman al And he finds that there is a servant of the governor standing there against him. Right, so you can kind of imagine. I've given you the the, the, the governor. Where is it? Uh, and actually, it's a Jastro bonus. On your little handout here, uh, the the prefect of a province, the governor, the lieutenant, Genesis Robert Eleven. Bingo. Right, and he sees the servant of the governor who is up there against him. So well, he's, he's arrived at the, the fish market. No, I think it's worse than that. He's got to the fish market, and there is only one the fish thing? left, and it's him against the gov against the servant of the governor of the town. At this point, the Chayat ought to be worried. Have a Hadain Masik lay Batimi? Vahadain Masik lay Batimi. Ad Dematia le Yud Bet Dinar. So this one betted up the price. And the other one betted up the price. Until the price reached 12 gold dinar. For this fish. For a fish. So this you is have like to an go. auction. It's like an auction for the last fish. But you, the thing that you the just have to know... Bartering. No, not bartering. Yeah. They're, they're, well, they're I mean, they're, they're bidding. Bidding. Yeah. Bargaining. 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 Right. No, uh, not, bargaining. Not, not even bargaining. The price is raising. Yeah, yeah, because they're bargaining against each other. Yeah. yeah. Let's, go for, let's go for auction. Yeah, bid. Right. <laughs> right? The point, the key point is 12 dina for a fish? Right? You just have to kind of say that because, you know, who knows how much. I don't know what a normal fish costs, but a whole lot less than... Twelve dinar. They're very. I mean, but you can work out how much a bunch of things used to cost. There are various little clues. Twelve dinar is a huge amount of money. Um, Maybe it's a very big fish. Yeah, there's a famous one about um, when about price gouging, mm -hmm. when um, the the rabbis kind of um, delete the number of, of birds that you need because people were, were selling birds too expensive. They were mm -hmm. selling birds for a whole gold dinar. Um, and it was it was taken back down. So you know, on the basis that one 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 gold dinar is price gouging for a bird, twelve gold dinar for a fish is clearly just you know stratospheric. He's trying to make a point. Ah, uh, you've realised. Okay, all right. Um, <laughs> and the 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 the, the, the tailor wins. The servant, right, he's clearly been told go out and buy a fish. Uh, you know, kind of only goes so far. But when he gets to twelve dinar, the servant backs down. Baantan de Irston Amati Fricus Latalia Lama Loi Tateli Nun. And at the time of the evening meal, the governor says to his servant, 
Why did you fish? bring me a fish from Mali? And he says here, Mari, my master. Mister, right? That's the same in Hebrew as it is in English. Ma lich por minach. What can I kaper? Forgive yeah. yeah, but it's Yom Kippur word. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Just a little bit of you know. What can I kipper? What can I? What can I? What can I kaper you? How can um? Uh, uh, what's that word that we use? Uh, expiate. How can I expiate? How can I? I think idiomatically. How can I hide from you what happened? Azilt velo havet taman elachad nun. I went there and there was only one. There, the only thing that was there was one fish. Vishtechit ano vechad yehudai. There was me on this one Jew. Kiamin uh, um, standing up against against him. I bid the price up. He bid the price up. Ad ad until the price came up to twelve dinas. What do you want from me? <laughs> It was a twelve dinar fish. So the 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 noon uh, betray a sardina at maha like a fish for twelve gold dinars. Ha! Huh. Yeah. Amarle, manhu, who? Manhu, manhu, who is this tailor who can afford twelve dinar of fish? Amarle, banash plum. It's Mister Plony. You know, it's Mr. Smith, right? Plony is that the name that gets used. Shalach um, Batre the Atalagabe. So they, he says, bring him to me, and they bring him to. Is him. he still heir of Yom Kippur? Well, <laughs> I, story, I, right? I mean, I have to say, it's got to be dinner time, right? It's got to be governor dinner time. So you kind of imagine that they drag this guy out of the uh, out of shul. He's in there for Kol Nidre. <laughs> Yeah, this is the Erev of Tsuma Rabba, the eve of the big fast. So this is a Yom Kippur. This is a Yom Kippur story. Amarle, Machamit Chayat who died Achal Nun betraya Sardina. You know what? What a sight that this Jewish tailor eats a fish that costs twelve dinar. Amarle, Mare, Itlan Chad Yom Bechol Chovin de Anan Avdin Kol Yume Hashda. So he says to him, Master, there is one day when all our chov, when all our debits, right, uh, um, obligations or sins, debts. debts, right, that we have done for kol yamei hashata, all the days of the year, they are mechaper, they are expiated. Alenon uh, from us, and uh, therefore, should we not need to honor it? So, should we not honor Yom Kippur? Interestingly, why do you need a fish for Yom Kippur? It's this meal you start the fast with most days. Why? It's good. It says meritorious to eat on the day before the fast as it is to fast. Yes, it's true, but why a fish? You're right. That there is a very strong tradition of eating fish. Fish, fish was this, fish was a Shabbos meal, wasn't it? I mean, it was well, it's about the fish head. It's fish, the fish oh, head. fish head. You should be like the head and not like the tail. Oh. It's a big. Uh, mm. It's a big thing. Um, and he said, when you bring proof for your words, you shall be patur. You'll be let off. Right, so the governor wants to kill him, you suspect, right? But when he brings proof for his words, I love the idea of proof for his words. How do you prove that Yom Kippur works? I don't know, maybe he bought him, you know, the uh, Rabbi Louis Jacobs guide <laughs> to uh, guide to the Jewish year. You know, <laughs> so, uh, Yom Kippur, it's very important mm-hmm. to eat fish and then all your sins mm-hmm. are forgiven. Oh, well, okay, then I'll let you off. Does, doesn't Kevan normally mean because Kevan Shehevet are right, because you brought a reason. Oh, very good. Then I will You're completely right. Yes, 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 yes. It's not usually because, but that's exactly how to do it in this situation. Quite right. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, because he because he could prove he wasn't just flashing money around. Mm. There was actually some. Because you gave me a good deep reason, reason as to why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, so actually, this is another midrash about the person of non-Jewish power respecting the um, the, the the Jew. Um, and then here comes 
the ending now proving that the whole midrash hangs together do you remember what we said the blessing was you pay out big god pays it back to you Ma parala hakadosh baruch hu. How did God pay back this uh, poor tailor? Halach v'kare ota. He went home and he cut open this fish. The zimen lo betocho margoliot tova. And God it zamen right in, invited. It's this word for the stones. Or God led. Or God placed inside of it a beautiful pearl. Bahayim el part mit part nes heimena kol yamav. And he was he was uh, yeah he, he kept him he kept him paid. Oh, yeah. So he got his money back. He got his money back. <laughs> 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 uh, we are done. See you next week. Thank you very much. Thank you. I must go to a fish bundle like that. <laughs>